Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of captives domiciled onshore these days. This probably has flipped over the last 10 to 15 years in the industry. Um, you know, 15, even 15 going back 20 years, you saw probably the majority of captives being domiciled offshore in the Caymans, Anguilla. Um, there were a few hot spots that have kind of shifted through the years. But, you know, back in the day, um, offshore is a very popular choice for single parent captives. Um, you know, there were some cell structures out there, as Matt mentioned, you know, SBUs or sponsored captives um, offshore. Uh, these days, with the increased scrutiny, you know, via the 8886, the IRS, you know, we're really seeing everybody, you know, looking onshore. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is that, you know, historically speaking, onshore has, you know, a bit tighter regula regulatory bodies, um, you know, regulations in terms of capital required, um, in terms of audit requirements. Those types of things have been much more strict or stringent onshore versus offshore. Uh, so that increased scrutiny kind of lends a little bit more credibility to an onshore captive, uh, which is again why we're seeing a lot of captives that have been formed over the last two, three to four years, you know, primarily forming onshore. Um, you know, offshore still has some niche markets out there. Um, you know, depending if you're ensuring international risk, then you know it still may be a solution. But for the most part, we're really looking. Onshore, um, you know, with one additional conversation piece, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of home state domiciling these days. So you see that component of it as well. Yeah, I think it's also just the proliferation of domestic domiciles. I mean, you know, 10 to 20 years ago, there was there was a handful of, you know, onshore options. But, um, you know, you had Vermont for the, you know, the Fortune 500 or publicly traded, South Carolina, you know, Hawaii, a few others. But now most of the states have captive enabling legislation and, you know, it comes down to a very basic thing of, you know, customer service, if you will, where, you know, they've got departments that are staffed and responsive and in local time zones, um, you know, fair but fast, you know, regulations. And they're, they're just, you know, a lot of attention to it. Um, and then so that naturally attracts, you know, that naturally attracts you know, businesses and business owners who want to, you know, figure out a good place to, to set up their captives. Yeah. And that, that customer service is probably a invisible, but probably one of the most important components of selecting domicile. Um, yeah. You know, the ability to respond quickly for requests, if you are looking for a dividend, if you're looking to set up, you know, the ability to, to move fast on the domicile's front for the client's need is very important. Yeah, the old joke used to be, you know, where do you want to go for your board of directors meeting, you know, Cayman Islands, Bermuda, you know, et cetera. And, but in, in actuality, it's really just, all right, you know, who picks up the phone, responds to the email and, you know, gets us our answers, um, you know, in the most timely fashion so we can do a good job for the clients. Yeah, the only other, the only other thing I would add to that was we, I see clients that are U.S. taxpayers and U.S. businesses going offshore when they're getting into reinsurance arrangements and the reinsurers are offshore and they're requiring you because it's, it's much easier for them in a court situation. If something goes sideways, if they're in Bermuda, that they, they would want the captive in Bermuda for that uh, purpose. But that's really the only time I see U S taxpayers, at least in the last, like Austin said, five or 10 years, um, who are making that decision to go offshore. And it's really, it's not their decision to go offshore. It's really the reinsurer that's saying, if you want to use our reinsurance, then we want your insurance company or your, your captive in Bermuda or Cayman or wherever. No, I did, yeah. uh, we were just, uh, Matt Anderson, Austin Griffith, and myself, we were all in uh, at a captive insurance conference and we sat down with some regulators from a domicile that we used to do a lot of business with, but, but we haven't. They, they, were, they weren't flexible. They, they weren't responding in a timely manner. And Matt went and had a conversation with them. And, and because they've been losing a lot of business to other domiciles, they're going to they're gonna, you know, loosen the reins and give some more flexibility and, and really work with us because of the book of business that we represent. Um, it's meaningful to, to their state. 